Hi, this is Amr Abdul Gawad, and we, in this lecture, we're going to discuss a very important topic, which are musculoskeletal manifestation in child abuse, or what's known as non-accidental trauma. What are the objectives of this lecture? First, we'd like to describe the clinical presentation of non-accidental trauma and explain the common fracture patterns that happen with the child abuse, and then differentiate between fractures due to accidental injury and non-accidental trauma, and then outline the general management of fracture due to non-accidental trauma. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself and Dr. Naga. So let's start with the definition of non-accidental trauma or what's known as child abuse. So non-accidental trauma is an injury that happened to the child uh, that was induced uh, intentionally or as a result of an obvious neglect. Uh, the old name uh, was child abuse. So what about the instance of non-accidental trauma or child abuse? Uh, actually, it's more common uh, than most people expect. It's about 1 to 1.5 percent of children are abused annually. Uh, so this in the United States will give us about 1 million child uh, each year. And there is more than 1,000 deaths each year in the United States are caused by child abuse. And the problem is more common in children under 3 years of age. So what are the risk factors for non-accidental trauma? As we said in the last child, young children more or less than three years of age are more commonly affected. Firstborn children, premature infants, disabled children, uh, like children with cerebral palsy are also risk factor. Uh, stepchildren, this is a risk factor. Single parents, families, uh, and children for parents who were abused when they were children, all these are risk factors for non-accidental trauma. So what is the clinical presentation for children with non-accidental trauma? Uh, most important thing is inappropriate clinical history. What does this mean? It means that there will be discrepancy uh, of the history between the guardians and or the children uh, and the, the story uh, and the mechanism of injury given by the same person will change uh, uh, when he speaks to different providers. And also you'll notice that the mechanism of injury that uh, given by the caregiver uh, does not explain the resultant trauma. So most important thing is inappropriate clinical history uh, it will change uh, between uh, between different providers it will change with time and it does not uh, give you the resultant trauma and there may be delay in seeking medical attention so if you see a patient uh, that had a fracture femur um, uh, three or four days ago that's a red flag uh, why the family waited for a long time before coming to the ER and also you notice that the caregiver can be hostile or indifferent so let's speak now about fractures that are associated with um, high suspicious for non-accidental trauma. Uh, and remember, uh, these fractures uh, have a high suspicious. Uh, they are not uh, for sure associated with non-accidental trauma, but uh, they increase your suspicious of that this uh, child may be subjected to a non-accidental trauma. Uh, the, very, the first uh, three are uh, associated with very high suspicious for non-accidental trauma. Uh, these are the corner fractures, the metaphyseal fractures. I'm going to show you some examples for these. These are fractures of the uh, uh, distal femur or proximal tibia. Rift fractures, these also are very high suspicious. And distal humeral physial fractures, also this is high suspicious. I'm going to show you uh, two examples of humeral uh, physial fractures. So remember, these threes are very high suspicious of non-accidental trauma corner fractures, rib fractures, and distal humeral physial fractures. Uh, these two fractures, the next two, the femur fracture in less than one year old and humeral shaft fracture in less than three years old, also have a, a, a high suspicious of non-accidental trauma. So if you see a femur fracture in a child that is not walking less than one year old, um, this is uh, an indication that this child may have been subjected to non-accidental trauma. In the same time, if you see a humeral shaft fracture um, in less than three years old, uh, because remember, you can get a distal humeral fracture uh, in less than three years old in a regular accidental trauma. Um, also, uh, very important is this one, fractures of different stages of healing. So if you get an x-ray and this shows completely healed a, hum a, re uh, a tibial fracture and a new femur fracture, for example, uh, that's um, an indication that this child may be indicated to an non-accidental trauma. I'm also going to show some examples of this. Uh, finger fractures in non-ambulant uh, children, uh, bilateral fractures, complex skull fractures, also these may be associated with non-accidental trauma. 
After we spoke about fractures which are common in non-accidental trauma, I'd like to uh, speak with you about patterns of fractures and it's associated with non-accidental trauma or child abuse because there is a, a very uh, common uh, misconception here about spiral fractures. So people think that spiral fractures are indicative uh, of non-accidental trauma. However, this is not correct because spiral fractures are common in both accidental injuries and non-accidental injuries. So they are common in child abuse and common that are cases that happen due to regular trauma and uh, in cases of non-accidental trauma or child abuse it's only one third of the cases um, of fractures in non-accidental trauma are spiral fractures. So what is the management in, uh, when you suspect a non-accidental trauma? Most important thing is a careful and detailed history. Uh, remember to ask about the mechanism of injury uh, because as we said before, uh, usually in non-accidental trauma, uh, the uh, caregiver will give a history that does not uh, 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 explain the resultant trauma or the uh, mechanism of injury may be changing um, uh, between different uh, caregiver or um, when the caregiver Caregiver is tell the story for different healthcare provider. Uh, always get the child protective uh, team uh, um, involved as early as possible uh, and uh, early contact with the child uh, primary care physician. Uh, always, if you're in doubt, admit the patient so he can be in a safe environment. So what are the imaging studies that you do if you're suspecting non-accidental trauma? It's mainly x-rays and in the x-rays we get skeletal survey or bone survey uh, for uh, children that you suspect that they have non-accidental trauma. Uh, the skeletal survey or bone survey consists of an AP and lateral of the skull, AP and lateral of the axial skeleton, AP of both arms, uh, forearms, hand, leg, thighs and feet. Uh, if it's negative and you have high suspicious, you can repeat it after one week to see the colors and the preosseous reaction as we're going to uh, show uh, in the coming slides. Um, uh, rarely we need a bone scan if the skeletal survey is negative and you still have high suspicious. Uh, it can show uh, the rib fractures and vertebral fractures uh, uh, clearer than uh, the regular x-ray. So let's speak about metaphyseal fractures or corner fractures. Uh, if you see in this x-rays, there is a small fracture here in the distal femur. Metaphyseal fractures are very specific for non-accidental trauma. Uh, they can happen in the distal femur or the proximal tibia. Uh, they show up in the uh, bone survey um, x-rays. Uh, they may be hard to detect clinically. However, uh, please keep in mind that uh, they, uh, the differential diagnosis of metaphyseal fracture is a bone spur uh, that can happen normally sometimes adjacent into the uh, physis. So this is a more obvious example of a corner fracture. Uh, so this is a young boy, a two month old, uh, with a suspected non-accidental trauma. Bone survey was done, and you can see here very obvious that he has a corner fracture or metaphyseal fracture uh, of the distal femur. You can see the line of the fracture here, and here is uh, how it looks, a corner fracture or metaphyseal fracture. So let's speak about rib fractures. These are very specific for uh, non-accidental trauma. Uh, usually they affect the posterior ribs uh, and the mechanism is usually squeezing injury of the chest. So if you see this is a chest x-ray, uh, you can see here that there is uh, um, evidence of possible affection uh, of the ribs with rib fractures after healing. However, if you would like to see the ribs better, uh, it's usually oblique x-rays or CT as we're going to see now. So this is the x-ray that we just saw in the previous uh, slide. And as I told you, you can see here some evidence of rib fractures. Also, you can see here, if you'd like to see it more, uh, clearer, you get an oblique uh, x-ray and that will show you the fracture much uh, obvious. So if you see here, this is an, a fracture that had healed in this rib, fracture that had healed in this rib, fracture that had healed in this rib. Uh, so oblique views will show you the rib fractures better if you're suspecting rib fractures. So again, this is the same x-ray that we saw, and this is the other oblique. So in the, in the previous slide, we saw this oblique, and we could see these fractures. And then now we're showing th uh, the other oblique, and you can see obviously here this fracture uh, that shows that that was an old fracture here of this rib that had healed. So let's speak now about femur fractures. Femur fractures uh, are actually a common fracture in children. However, if you get a femur fracture in a child who did not walk yet, this is a red flag for possible non-accidental trauma. So this is a nine-month-old uh, boy uh, came uh, with a fracture shaft femur um, spiral. Uh, this child did not walk yet, so uh, this is a red flag for non-accidental trauma. Bone survey was done. Uh, uh, fractures of the clavicle were noted. Uh, that's uh, a possible non-accidental 
accidental trauma. He has multiple fractures. Uh, this child was treated with a spica cast, as you can see in this x-ray. Uh, so femur fracture in a non-ambulatory child, a child less than one year old, is a red flag for possible non-accidental trauma. So let's see another example that would show us both the rib fractures and femur fractures. So this is a three-month-old boy presented to the ER with difficult breathing, breathing and a fuzziness. Uh, so chest x-ray was uh, seen um, and uh, maybe it is uh, difficult to see here, but when uh, if you see the lateral x-ray of this patient, you obviously can see here uh, evidence of multiple rib fracture. If you see this, this, and this, and this, all these are multiple rib fractures. And if you look closely outside of the chest, you'll see here that this child has a fractured clavicle here on his right side. So this is an x-ray was taken because the child has uh, difficulty breathing. Um, maybe you don't see lots of things here in the lung, but obviously this clavicle is broken. The lateral view of the lung uh, of the chest show uh, that uh, multiple rib fractures. Uh, so see if you see when he had a CT in only one cut of the CT, you can see three different fractures uh, of the rib. So this is an uh, old fracture of the rib. This is healing fracture of the rib. This is healing fracture of the rib. You can see uh, lots of colors. And that's what we mean uh, by multi uh, fractures in different stages of healing. Not all the fractures are in the same stage of healing because uh, the, these children are usually subjected to multiple attacks of abuse. So in this cut, the, you have three fractures, one here, one here, and one here. And it seemed that they have been going on for a few days because there is colors already. When we got the bone survey, you can see here this is a new fracture because there is no colors of the femur. So this child has a femur fracture and rib fracture. Uh, rib fractures seem that they have been going on for days because it's, it's signs of healing. Femur fractures looks new. There is no signs of healing. Also, he presented uh, when a CT was done. Um, also, we found that he had a vertebral compression fracture. If you see, this one is compressed. It's not similar to the other. So this is also another uh, uh, fracture uh, for in this kid. So he had multiple fractures in different extremities, different stages of healing. This is uh, an indication of non-accidental trauma or child abuse. Let's discuss another lesion, which is periosteal bone injuries. Periosteal bone injuries in cases of non-accidental trauma, they uh, are usually a sign of fracture repair. Uh, sometimes it happens without fractures, rarely as a sign of accelerations or friction, but in most cases it's associated with fracture repair. As if you see here, uh, this is a child who had a, a non-accidental trauma. He had a fracture here, and then there is a periosteal reaction here in the radius and the ulna. So you can see periosteal reaction here in both the radius and ulna which is this line here and this line here uh, and also these lines here all this is periosteal reaction uh, another uh, more obvious uh, this is a seven year month old uh, we had uh, non-accidental trauma uh, ex uh, the bone survey showed he had fracture of the right femur left femur and uh, right tibia if you see there is exuberant colors and also periosteal reaction so if you see these lines here all this periosteal reaction so the bone ends here this is the end of the bone and this is the periosteal reaction here this is another periosteal reaction here signs of healing if you see this is a fracture uh, uh, right femur uh, with exuberant uh, colors and also periosteal action going all the way uh, to the proximal end of the femur. Uh, here also you can see periosteal reaction here and periosteal reaction here. Um, all this is a sign of a fracture repair in non-accidental trauma. Let's discuss now a, a fracture which is very characteristic for cases of non-accidental trauma, which is the transphyseal fracture of the humerus. These fractures happen when the caregiver hold the arm with one hand and the forearm with the other hand and push, uh, push each one in different direction. So what will happen is a fracture uh, uh, at the physis of the distal uh, humerus. And because these kids are very young, their physis is still cartilaginous, so these x-ray are a little bit hard to detect. So this is a picture of a transphyseal fracture fracture of the humerus and I'm going to show you uh, how to identify this fracture now. So this is the x-ray of that child. Here, this is uh, the right elbow and here's the left elbow. And remember, he's a, a kid of non-accidental trauma. So he has multiple fractures. If you can see here, here's periosteal reaction here. Here's periosteal reaction here, indicating that there was a fracture here uh, uh, that had healed. Uh, so as we said, this is uh, his left elbow. And if you see the relation between the ulna and uh, the humerus and the radius and the humerus, that's how it should be. So this is the lower part of the humerus here is cartilaginous you don't see it but it should align with the radius and the ulna uh, 
So again, this part is the cartilaginous lower part of the uh, humerus. This is his x-ray of the other side. If you see here, his radius and ulna does not lie uh, in line with his humerus. So that means that the, that the lower part of the humerus, which is supposed to be here, had a fracture through this area and went into uh, the medial direction, went into that direction. So the lower part of the humerus here, which we don't see because it's cartilaginous, actually lie here. And if you so see and look very closely, there is this area here, which is um, a part, a, a small calcified part of the distal humerus uh, that if you uh, had um, moved medially, and uh, you can see it if you look closely here. So how to understand this x-ray? So the lower part of the humerus, which was supposed to be here, moved and it's now here. So this is the lower part of the humerus that we don't see completely because um, it is cartilaginous. Uh, and if you see here, the radius and the ulna does not lie in line with the humerus. I know it's hard to uh, detect these x-rays. Um, uh, these fractures uh, are very hard to detect. Uh, and uh, it needs lots of experience so you can know that this is a transphyseal fracture of the humerus. I'd like to uh, explain this for you more. So here's the x-ray in the acute fracture. You see here's a radius fracture, ulna fracture. Uh, and as we said, the distal humerus was supposed to be here. He had a fracture through this area. It moved uh, medially uh, part. Uh, here you can see it, the only uh, ossified part of the distal humerus. But this is now the same patient uh, after a few weeks. You can see here he started to heal his radius and ulna. He has periosteal reaction indicating that the fracture had healed. And if you look closely here, this is also a periosteal reaction forming. So the, his distal humerus, which is now here, it was supposed to be here. The fracture happened here. It moved medially. And now you're going to start seeing the healing here. Uh, in this area, uh, if you see, look closely, you can see the periosteal reaction. So this is now his distal humerus, and you can see also here this is part of his uh, uh, of the ossified distal humerus had moved from here to here. If you're in doubt, you can get an MRI or uh, what's known as arthrogram. So again, if you see here, radius uh, and ulna does not line completely with the humerus. They should have been here. What had happened is a transphyseal fracture here, and this distal humerus had moved. So when we did an arthrogram for this child, you can obviously see here, this is his distal humerus. So that's his distal humerus. You can see it because we, get, we put a dye inside the joint. And obviously, the, he has a transphyseal fracture uh, because this distal humerus here does not lie in line with the proximal humerus. So here's his shaft of the humerus. His distal humerus was supposed to be here, but now you can see it because we put the dye, and now you can see it had moved immediately. So this is another patient. If you're in doubt, you can get an MRI or arthrogram, and you can see here the transphyseal fracture, very obvious. Very important thing to keep in mind that not every child presenting with multiple uh, fractures or uh, fractures with no uh, obvious history is um, a non-accidental trauma or child abuse. Uh, there are other causes for fractures in children. Accidental trauma, very common in children. Children all the time run, jump, play in the playground, uh, fall down. Sometimes they are subjected to high energy traumas, motor vehicle hit by a car, um, have a bike accident. All these can cause trauma. Uh, so it's not every child presenting with uh, polytrauma or multiple fractures is non-accidental trauma. Uh, sometimes kids fracture with minimal trauma if they have bone disease like osteogenes imperfecta or metabolic bone disease like rickets. Uh, periosteal reactions can be seen uh, sometimes with osteomyelitis and physiological periostitis. So all these uh, causes keep them in mind um, if you're suspecting non-accidental trauma. So a quick note on the legal aspect of non-accidental trauma. Remember that all states require that uh, if you're suspecting non-accidental trauma to report that to the state. And if you uh, report a case as a non-accidental trauma and it turned out to be uh, a regular trauma or ac accidental trauma, uh, you're protected from uh, liability if you report it in good faith. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, remember all my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision. Thank you.